T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Flight control, we have no confirmed. Senior year of high school, I took an environmental science class for the very first time. Quite frankly, because I was told it was the easy science course, and I didn't think I was very good at science. What I didn't know is that I was absolutely going to fall in love with the topic. And I was going to realize for the first time in my life that our climate crisis was going to be one of the most defining social justice issues of our generation, and I wanted to do something about it. The problem was I wasn't sure what to do. A few years later, I read the book Eating Animals, which is about factory farming or industrial animal agriculture in America, and an idea hit me. I realized that factory farming was at the core of so many issues we faced as a society. It was at the nexus of worker issues, environmental racism, public health issues, animal welfare, and last but not least, our climate crisis. I learned that livestock emissions are responsible for 14.5% of global greenhouse gas emissions. Livestock are the number one user of our planet's land resources and one of the largest users of our fresh water consumption. And then I learned this. The Eat Lancet Commission on Food, Planet, and Health states very clearly that yes, we need to work on global decarbonization. We need to cut our emissions in half by 2030 and achieve net zero carbon emissions by 2050. However, even if we do all that and we don't focus on our food, we don't shift our diets away from factory farming and towards more plant-based meals, we're not going to meet the Paris Climate Agreement goals. What does that mean? That means even if we do everything right that we're supposed to do for global decarbonization, but we don't focus on food, we're not going to get there. We're still going to suffer the most dire consequences our climate crisis has to offer. And so I was sold. I knew that I wanted to focus on food. I knew that I wanted to shift, help people shift their diets. So I started with me. I started eating a plant-based diet because I no longer wanted to use my purchasing power to support an industry that I was morally at odds with. And I decided that I wanted to help other people with their diet changes too because it wasn't an easy shift. But I was working against a very powerful social construct. I was working against a hamburger default world. What I mean by that is this. I could close my eyes and point to any random restaurant on a map, and I could walk in there and assume that most likely I'm going to be able to get a really great hamburger or chicken nuggets or a steak, but you can't say the same for a delicious plant-based meal. The definition of a default is the option that's automatically selected for you unless an alternative is specified. A great example of this is for those of you that have iPhones, my guess is if I called everyone at the same time, the majority of us, we'd hear the same ringtone. Now that might seem like an inconsequential example, and it is, but I think it shows you how powerful the default option is. It's not just one choice among many. It's the default option. A much more universally well-known example of default and a much more consequential example is organ donation. In the U.S., our default option is that we are not organ donors, which means when we go and get our license, I had to check a box, sign a form, in order to become an organ donor, which is why it's not surprising that in America, though 90% of adults support organ donation, only 60% of us are registered organ donors. Other countries like France, Austria, or Poland, where by default you're an organ donor when you turn 18 or when you get a license, so you're automatically an organ donor unless you sign a form to opt yourself out, they see numbers at almost 100% of citizens registered as organ donors. And now I want to tell you a story about how this same concept can work for food and work really, really well.
There was a theology conference a few years back in the UK, and they decided, you know, this wasn't an academic con or this was an academic conference. It wasn't anything about climate change, but the people organizing the event wanted to align their food choices with their environmental values, and so they decided that for their menu, for their registration form for the conference, they were going to make the vegetarian option the default this time around. Now, the previous year, where the meat option was the default, out of the 1,400 conference participants that came, 200 of them ate a vegetarian meal. This year, when the vegetarian option was the default, over 1,000 of the 1,400 conference participants ate a vegetarian meal. In 2019, a study came out, a peer-reviewed study was published in Denmark that showed very similar and actually more successful results. You can see here in experiment one, group one, the conference registration form had a meat option as the default, and 2% of participants chose to opt themselves into that vegetarian meal, right? In group two, when the vegetarian meal was the default, 87% of people stuck with it. That is an 85% increase in the amount of vegetarian meals served just by simply changing an option in a registration form. And you can see that across the board, the results stuck. An approximate 80% increase in the amount of vegetarian options served simply by changing the default on a menu. So this works, right? This is really successful. But I want to take a step back and talk about what we have chosen to accept and the consequences we face as a result of the current hamburger default world we live in. The first is factory farming. We raise over 70 billion animals globally to slaughter for human consumption. Not 70 million, 70 billion. And that's not even counting fish, which are in the trillions. Over 99% of animals in America are raised on factory farms. And with factory farms and with animals comes their excrement. This is a photo taken, a satellite image, of a cattle feedlot in Texas. And you can see this manure lagoon in the middle. And you can see the extreme runoff that comes from these industries. You can only imagine what that does to the air and water pollution in surrounding areas. The people that live in these surrounding areas suffer much higher risks of diseases and illnesses such as cancer, and they are predominantly surrounded by communities of color and communities in poverty. And last but definitely not least, we've accepted the fact that our Amazon rainforest, our planet's lungs, were literally on fire due to deforestation, which is in large part because we needed land for cattle to graze. What this can make us forget is that our food system is not inevitable. It's actually far from it. Factory farming has been around for less than a century. It's been around for less than 75 years. And when you think about that, in the span of human history, that's a blip. We can move forward past this time where we all know we're treating workers and animals and our planet's resources with extreme disrespect. What do you think future generations are going to look back on this and think? But luckily, we can move past this, and we can move closer to menus that look a little more like this. I spend my days working with institutions, helping them to serve more sustainable meals. That conversation used to be a more difficult one. I used to have to ask them to think about cutting back a certain percentage of animal products, reducing their animal product consumption. And it's never fun to tell people that they should have less of anything, right? When I was able to shift that conversation to asking them to shift their default to plant-based meals and still provide freedom of choice for any diner, preserve inclusivity for everyone, and be able to align their food choices with their values for sustainability and the environment and the health of their diners, everything changed. That conversation went from frustrating to excited. It was amazing to see. 
And the cool thing about this is that it's not about individual or systemic change, right? You don't have to pick one. It's right in the middle. You not only get to decide what you eat three times a day, you can help your communities shift the way they're serving food too. Let's say you are hosting a barbecue next weekend for family and friends. You can say, hey, we're going to be serving these delicious new plant-based burgers and brats and hot dogs that I found at the grocery store. They're so delicious. Let me know if you'd like meat, and I'll have it for you. If you're a student at a university, you can ask your university department to adopt a policy that states that from now on, all of your future events and conferences are going to serve plant-based meals by default, and diners can opt in for meat in advance if they'd like. Let's say you're an employee that works at an office or in a corporation, and you every Friday, you bring in sandwiches. You can ask your administrator to say, hey, next Friday, let's serve roasted vegetable hummus and olive tapenade sandwiches for everyone, and ask them in advance if they'd like a sandwich with meat, along with the question we already ask everyone, which is what dietary restrictions do you have? Are you vegetarian, vegan? Do you have allergies? It's the same thing. It's just flipping the script. And last but not least, if you are hosting a conference or a wedding or an event for next year and your RSVP form was going to look like this, why not change it to something that looks a little more like this? It's really that simple. And these simple changes make a big difference. We need to focus on food, right? I think that's pretty clear. And most of us are trying to, but it is difficult when our defaults in society are being determined and are in the hands of large animal agriculture corporations. But I'm telling you, we can take that power back. I promise you we can. It is exhausting to swim, swim against the current in a hamburger default world. I can tell you that more than anyone. But we together can turn the tide and empower each other to shift the default and to serve sustainable meals by default for generations to come to ensure a climate resilient future for everyone. Thank you.